Hello, and welcome to the Listening Post's unboxing channel on YouTube. Today, we're unboxing SVS excellent mid-price, mid-sized subwoofer, their PB2000. This uh, about 500 watt uh, subwoofer, 12 inch ported, is amazing. Look, it's bigger than most, but if you can if you can give your home theater the real estate that this deserves, the performance is so good that you'll wonder how on earth you worry you you ever sort of put up with some of the lesser subwoofers that are available, or perhaps shrunk down because you went oh it's a bit big in that corner. Well, this is big, it's not completely monstrous, but it's big, it's powerful, and it works brilliantly well. This is in a class of subwoofer that starts to rattle you not just your seat, and it's astonishing. So, let's have a look. Right, SVS subwoofers. Actually, look, let's have a look at the box first, because I'm going to cheat in a moment. I'm going to show you, you should probably do the same in your own home. SVS subwoofers. Plain and simple packaging, basic information, lets you know how to open it. Um, model, there's a website to go to. You've got a couple of things, look on one side, you've got a bit of this, and on this side, You've got the model and serial number information. It uh, delineates on one side the voltage, but look, if you if you buy one of these and you take one of these home, I'm going to give you some advice. Roll it over. The accessories and, and, and things are at the bottom of these products, and so if uh, if you're lucky enough to own one of these, don't open them from the top. Do this. Open it from the bottom. Uh, break the factory seal with a simple craft knife. Inside is a second freight box, um, kind of becoming standard for SVS to do this double boxing. Um, these are large heavy products, so they understand that carriers aren't going to necessarily be very delicate with the product. So, you know, they're not going to uh, scrimp on a little bit of packaging, because I understand they want this product to reach you in one piece. Nevertheless, we've opened the two boxes and um, what I'm going to do is just quickly get rid of the first bit of closed cell packaging. Now this is a big subwoofer and so is the packaging. You'll see, <coughs> you'll see here a certain inlay uh, specifically for the grill. So I'm going to get rid of that and then I'm going to yank out of the box the grill and just put that off to one side for a moment. We'll, we'll deal with that a little bit later and go fishing for some of the accessories. There's the New Zealand power cord. Um, uh, IEC. There's no earth on this one. Off it goes. And then I'm going to do what you should in your own home, which is at this point just very carefully rock it back over. Um, I put my hand on the subwoofer itself, so there's no risk of it slipping aggressively onto the floor and maybe damaging. So it's just slipped down. We'll get rid of the box. Slip that over there and continue with this excellent subwoofer. So, again, packaging. These guys know how to ensure that this product reaches you in one piece. This is quite particular to the layout of the knobs and everything and stops this product from being damaged with any impact in freight. Um, along the bottom is a basic piece of this closed cell foam sort of paper and that's simply just to give it another little layer of protection. There's an oversized bag, and that bag is sealed at the bottom. It's simple enough, it's simple enough bag to remove. Rock the um, uh, rock the subwoofer up. Oh, hey, there's that big fist-sized bag of desiccant. Now it's great to see that they include these because, for obvious reasons, it may get a little bit damp in shipping. Big heavy items like this aren't going to be air freighted in some lap of luxury. They're going to be sea freighted in containers, and unfortunately we don't know how, you know, how that might be affected. So it's great to see a massive bag of desiccant preserving this product in freight. The bag, once off, starts to reveal the physical size of this subwoofer. Now it's large. I warned you about that. It's supposed to be because it's really, really good. Looking at the front, you see some of the most obvious things of this from a performance standpoint. So there's a 12-inch forward firing uh, driver, backed up with a, a massive port. 
allowing that driver to breathe really, really well and deliver the prestigious bass into your room effortlessly. Above the driver, there is the Trical LED letting you know uh, what state this is in, on, off, standby, all of those types of things. And looking again at the driver, it's massive annulus, big heavy driver, very, very rigid, very, very well made. And for the working end of the subwoofer, this is superb to see something so uh, generously proportioned as far as all of the things that need to be in place. Looking at the side of it, it's pretty boring. It's just a black box. This is in the sort of black oak or the... The, the classic black veneers that we see in a lot of speakers in our days. Um, looking at the back, and please hang around for some photographs. We're going to take some close-up of all of these things, so anything you might miss out on the video, you'll see some close-ups of towards the end. Nevertheless, looking at the back, this is the inputs and outputs we've learned to expect now with all of the SVS subwoofers. It has a very simple IEC power input and a rocker switch for on and off. Above it is some information about its voltage and warnings and all of those things, and basically don't take the thing apart. Above it is um, barcode information and scanning uh, for the purposes of tracking a serial number, and of course a little bit of information about SVS and the sledge power amplification. Now, I love that. Anytime I read the brochure manual, it always brings a smile to my face when they talk about its digital amplification and how it's the sledge technology that they use. Across this side, of course, are the bits that you and I will need day to day. Inputs and outputs. Now with this particular model, they have lost the speaker level input in favour for a raw performance, because it's unlikely that this is going to be used in a stereo environment. It's more likely to be used in a home theatre. So there's a very clearly labelled LFE input, although you can run a stereo input if you wish. There's also an output, and that allows for the subwoofer to uh, subwoofer's crossover network to be utilised to bleed the low frequencies away from any connected electronics. An amplifier or processor with a tape loop input or output or a theatre loop will allow this to be daisy chained in and out, giving uh, all of the bass to the sub and none to the related speakers. Above the ins and outs, we've got a trigger. This is between three and twelve volts, and enables us to force it into a standby from either. The theatre amplifier as you turn it on and off, or any manner of control solutions that may be able to give it a relay control and to say, hey, need you to turn off now. There's a little toggle above those, and that just allows you to select between always on and its auto sense or standby mode. The auto sense, of course, is going to turn it on when it senses a signal above a certain threshold, and turn it off when the signal reduces below that threshold for a reasonable period of time. Above that uh, standby switch, we've got the low pass filter. Uh, like all subs, it's going to try and do its lowest frequency, and then you are setting the highest, the highest one you want it to deliver. You can set it all the way from maybe 60 hertz all the way to an LFE input, which I guess would be around the 180. If you're using this for home theatre, it's important that you, s you run this all the way around to the indicated LFE, or bypass, so that this is not touching the signal in any way, and it's letting the processing of the sub or for frequencies being done to be done by the home theatre amplifier. Above that is phase. Now, uh, with any good subwoofer, I would expect to see a variable phase like we do here. You can't always put a subwoofer in the ideal location, so being able to adjust the phase between 0 and 180 in a more or less infinite way enables you to get the performance exact or just a little bit better if you've got the time and patience to do so. Above of course, is the most important, and that's the volume control. Let's be honest, we all adjust that and have a little bit more thump and welly for the times that we need to, and a little bit less when we need a little bit more discretion in the soundtrack. Okay, so looking at it again, just very, very briefly, I uh, will add to it the steel grill. So before we sign off, I'm going to show you the steel grill that comes with these. So the 2000 series, both the uh, sealed box and ported box, come with the resonant, anti-resonant grill. It's curved, it's made of steel, it's got rubber stoppers, and it fits beautifully to the front. And that's, that's the classic look that we see day to day with SVS is this. So, there we have it. SVS's uh, PB, ported box, 2000, their 12 inch, approximately 500 watt powered subwoofer, unboxed here at the listening post in Christchurch, New Zealand. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more, subscribe to our channel.